GM friends, breaking news. DYDX decided to set up their own Cosmos-based blockchain. This is super big because DYDX is one of the largest DeFi protocols out there with lots of TVL. And in today's episode, we will discuss if this is bullish for Cosmos and what this means for the future of the interchain. So let us not waste much more time and get this episode started. Three, two, one. Here we go. Before diving deeper into the conversation though, let us clarify the question what DYDX is actually all about. DYDX is a decentralized protocol where people can trade perpetual contracts. So what are perpetual contracts? Why don't you explain this to me like I am an eight year old? Perpetual contracts are a way for people to invest in certain assets without holding these assets natively. So, for example, you could buy a perpetual asset that tracks the price of ETH. And this is how you invest in ETH and get an exposure to the price actions of ETH without holding ETH natively in your wallet. Perpetual contracts are a type of derivative and derivatives are the largest part of the financial sector. And I want to show you a website now where you can see how powerful and big derivatives are. This post shows very clearly how big derivatives are. And before we really dive deeper here, please note that this post is more than two years old. So please keep that in mind. So many of these numbers changed already. So we can see here silver with a market cap of $43.9 billion. Then we have cryptocurrencies with $244 billion. Again, this is an older post. So also this number has changed. Then we have the military spending, the US, the US budget deficit, coins and banknotes, the Fed's balance sheet at $7 trillion. All the wealth of all the billionaires combined is $8 trillion. Again, also this changed. Then we have gold, the Fortune 500, the stock markets, the money supply, and the global debt. The global debt is here at $253 trillion. But again, old post, this also changed. Then we have the global real estate, the global wealth, and here the global wealth was estimated at $360.6 trillion. And then we have derivatives. Derivatives are huge. As you can see here, it's massive. It's massive. This sector is so big and the notional value is one quadrillion dollars. So yeah, derivatives are a gigantic market and represent the largest part of the financial sector. But now let us have a closer look at the interface of DYDX. As you can see here, you can buy a perpetual contract that tracks the price of ETH, Bitcoin, Solana, Avalanche, Uniswap, etc, etc, etc. So even though DYDX is as of now part of the Ethereum ecosystem, you can also buy assets like NEAR. So this is basically the definition of multi-chain because you can trade all kinds of assets in form of a perpetual contract. But now let us have a closer look at how large DYDX actually is. I'm here on DeFi Pulse and DeFi Pulse is a website that tracks the TVL of different DeFi protocols on Ethereum. Because as of now, DYDX is still in the Ethereum ecosystem. We have Maker on rank number one. MakerDAO is the protocol that mints the DAI stablecoin. Then of course, Uniswap, Curve, Aave, and so on and so forth. And then on rank 11, we have DYDX. DYDX has a TVL of $719 million. This is big. It's even bigger than Yearn Finance, for example, or SushiSwap. So, wow, this is a lot of TVL. And also, the volume is very, very large, but we will talk more about this in a second. But just to give you like kind of a visualization of how big this is, let us go to Osmosis. As of now, Osmosis has the largest TVL in the interchain, and Osmosis has a TVL of $266 million. So all of a sudden DYDX joins the interchain and is automatically the largest chain in terms of TVL. And as you can see here as well, Osmosis has a 24 hour trading volume of $26.7 million, which is cool. But now let us head over to DYDX and let's go to the trading interface once again. And what you see, what you will see here is this. The trading volume in the last 24 hours is 
682 million dollars. So more than 682 million dollars to be more precise. So it's much larger than Osmosis in terms of TVL and trading volume. And this is absolutely massive if you just imagine that this protocol will enter the interchain and will be automatically the largest chain in terms of TVL in trading volume. So as you can see, DYDX is big, derivatives are big, and all of this will come to the interchain. And now let us have a closer look at what happened actually. So what did DYDX actually announce? Therefore, let us go on Twitter. We see here an announcement post, DYDX announced DYDX v4. And they also announced here that they will develop a standalone Cosmos based blockchain. So instead of being a protocol that is being deployed on a layer one, they are becoming their own blockchain. And now let us have a closer look at their announcement post we see here, DYDX v4, it is about to come. They will also explain to the community what Cosmos is and why they have chosen a standalone Cosmos chain. So why is this so? So they also said that one of the big reasons here is that most layer ones and most layer twos cannot handle their throughput. Being deployed on top of a layer one or layer two won't be enough in order to handle all the throughput that is coming through DYDX. And if you think, or if you consider better said that DYDX is becoming larger in the future, of course they have to think about how they will expand in the future. So yeah, as you can see here, they mentioned a layer one, like being deployed on a layer one or layer two could lead to problems in terms of throughput. And this is also the reason why they chose Cosmos because they mentioned it here they said that one of the main benefits of Cosmos is that there's the opportunity for people to trade without any gas fees, which is of course very attractive to all the users that are using DYDX. So how will all the fees be generated? Well, you have to separate this. So of course the transactions that are natively generated on the layer ones are basically non-existent or can be non-existent. So you know how Cosmos works. So if you do a transaction or osmosis, you can say, hey, I want to pay a very small transaction fee or actually I do not want to pay anything. This is an opportunity so you can use the chain without paying gas fees. But so or so DYDX will generate fees, but they will basically charge the user whenever they want to make a trade. So for example, it is like on Kraken. So for example, when you do a trade on Kraken, you also have to pay a very small transaction fee. And this is how Kraken makes profit. And this is also how DYDX will make profit. So the protocol itself. And this is also how the stakers will make money because again, DYDX will become an own Cosmos chain. And therefore they also, they will also have different validators in their validator set and all the fees that are being generated through these trading procedures they will go to the stakers and to the delegators and this is how dydx remains profitable if you want to say it like this so this is very very cool to know and they said that they will publish more information throughout the year because there are still some questions left. So for example, right now DYDS, uh, DYDX is on Starknet and Starknet is a layer two. So there are still some questions left. So what will happen with DYDX on in the Ethereum ecosystem? Will this still will DYDX still be part of the Ethereum ecosystem or will they basically leave the Ethereum ecosystem completely? Also, what will happen with the existing token? This is also a question of mine because as of now, DYDX is an ERC20 token, so you can add it to the MetaMask, but what will this look like if you D if you use DYDX with your Kepler wallet? We saw the problems with FMOS already so yeah, I'm very curious what this will look like precisely in the future. All in all, a giant is coming to the interchain, which is DYDX. And this also means more TVL and more trading volume generally within the Cosmos ecosystem. Because for example, if you trade on DYDX and you make a win, you can also say, hey, I'm depositing all of my gains in a stablecoin pool on Osmosis. So this is also pretty interesting to see. And I like how all the money Legos are being played out right now, because also Exla built a bridge to Osmosis and we see more and more stablecoins like DAI and USDC 
on osmosis we see wrapped bitcoin we see wrapped ethereum and now we also have a massive derivative trading protocol in the cosmos ecosystem so this is very very exciting it also means that some projects will face more competition so for example injective they are doing something very similar to dydx so more competition will also take place in the interchain which is in my view a good thing because competition leads to more innovation and also i want to also highlight this i find it very very cool that dydx is very very different to osmosis because now or in a couple of weeks and a couple of months from now, we will have like one big protocol like DYDX that is doing perpetual contracts. And then we also have Osmosis, another giant that is an AMM. So we see that how all the money Legos are being played out in the interchain, very similar to the early days of Ethereum, where we first saw Maker, then we saw Uniswap, Compound, Yearn Finance, and then also finally synthetics and DYDX. So I kind of see the same development here in the interchain. So the more projects like these are coming to the interchain, the better. Also, this marks a historical milestone because for the very first time we see an Ethereum project launching its own customized blockchain within the Cosmos ecosystem. This is absolutely massive because we may have seen Aave, for example, to launch an FMOS, but this is the very first case of an Ethereum protocol saying, hey, the interchain vision makes sense and it makes sense for us to launch our own customized chain. So this is big. With that being said, this is one of the most exciting news stories I have seen in a long time in the interchain. And this could also be the beginning of more Ethereum projects launching their own customized Cosmos chain. So if this is the beginning, we will have a bright future ahead. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, comment in the comment section below. Give us a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. This triggers YouTube algorithm and leads to an atom pump on the other hand. And with that being said, guys, I hope I will see you the next time. I mean, the Terra ecosystem was largely made up of Anchor, actually. Uh, I mean, I remember actually not many weeks before the collapse, I saw someone mention how flourishing it was, how there was so much stuff going on. And I went to the ecosystem page to click through the projects. And I mean, Anchor was the beast, right? It, it was uh, holding, I don't know, 14 billion UST. And then the next protocol, I don't remember, Mars or Mirror, it was vastly smaller. Like those, I mean, significant TVL in it for sure, uh, but compared to Anchor, it was nothing. So like you could almost say that uh, Terra was Anchor.